blockers, anti-inflammatories, anti-hypertensives. Whenever you hear these words that imply some kind of negative activity, anti or blocking or inhib inhibition, you're dealing with poison, period. Not poetically, not rhetorically, not hyperbolically, literally. You're dealing with a poison. Now, of course, all drugs are poisons, but the most egregious ones are the ones that have the, the, the designation poison right in the name. Inhibitor, blocker. How, does, how do you think something blocks? How do you think a chemical blocks a chemistry, biochemistry in the body? It doesn't, just, it doesn't just ask it nicely. It poisons it. In the case of ACE inhibitors, what you're, what's, occurring, what's occurring is the body is kicking in with a stress response, and so you're inhibiting the body's ability to handle stress. You're inhibiting the body's ability to handle emergencies. You're suppressing the emergency or the stress response. Now, I'm just a pharmacist. I'm nowhere near as smart as your doctor, who, of course, went to medical school. I'm only a pharmacist, but it seems to me that if we have an elevated stress response, if we have an emergency response, maybe we should be checking on what the body is perceiving as a survival threat, rather than shutting down the body's ability to respond to the survival threat via a poison. And because the emergency usually involves reactions to foods or incompletely digested foods of some, kind, of some sort, digestive issues, high blood sugar, low levels of oxygen, what it means is that we can probably address our stress issues and our high blood pressure issues and our elevated aldosterone issues and our elevated stress hormone issues ourselves without our doctor. Now, I didn't go to medical school. I'm not as smart as your doctor, but that's just what it seems to me. If you got elevated stress hormones, it seems to me we, maybe we could figure out what the stress is and reduce it. Food, digestion, blood sugar, Respiration. As always, the best ways to take care of our chronic health issues involve our lifestyle choices. Now, aldosterone is a fluid and salt control hormone. Fluid and salt control hormone, and this link to salt is really, really important because it, there's a clue there. The link that aldosterone has to salt is our clue to lowering aldosterone levels, and there's an incredibly easy and important strategy way to naturally lower your aldosterone levels without ACE inhibitor drugs, without genetic therapy, without having to worry about any, any, of, the, any of the tools or devices or pharmaceutical interventions that the medical model uses. We'll talk about that tomorrow on the Bright Side as we continue talking high blood pressure and the adrenal glands, all as it relates to the skin and hyperpigmentation. I haven't forgotten about the skin. We're going to be talking lots about hyperpigmentation, dark spots, and ways that you can reduce dark spots on your own at home using simple cosmetic or, or a topical skin health strategies. We'll talk about that tomorrow and in the coming days on the Bright Side. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'll see if we can get one call in before we go to break. Maria in Florida, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Ben. How are you? Doing good. What's going on, Maria? Oh, my God. This mouse thing is driving me crazy. Oh, I now. talked to you. Did I talk to you last week? We tried, but it, it, it went off, so you told me to call you again. Okay, hang on, Maria, because I got a break, and then we'll get you first up when we come back, so don't go away. All right, if you're on hold, we'll get to you as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back. On the bright side, I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Maria in Florida about burning mouth syndrome. Correct, Maria? Is that right? Um, I think that's uh, that's what it is. It's really dry right now. Is it so for you? On my you? lips. Okay. It, does, it burns on the tongue and in the upper part of your mouth kind of thing? That, that happened at the very beginning, like for two excruciating days. Oh, that's and awful. And then after that, it just comes and go, but more like dry, like my that, tongue. I, and I became even afraid to eat. And I've been I don't blame to eat you. as healthy as possible. I joined Joint DVD a couple of weeks ago. I that, bought the digestive pack. I started that like uh, maybe roughly two weeks ago. Did I tell you about that? How did you know about that? 
to use well, digestive support. To you. Okay, good for you. Good for you, Maria. <laughs> okay, let me tell you. First of all, let me tell the listeners. You can't think of anything more miserable. There's a lot of miserable oh things that can happen to the body, but I'm telling you. If you can imagine the misery of having a scalding, burning tongue and mouth, it is just agony beyond description, as I'm sure you know, Maria, I don't have to tell you, but for the listeners who yes. haven't heard of this before, it's called burning oh mouth God. syndrome. I, I, it, it depresses me at times and everything, and I'm okay. very, you know, well, here's, I'm going and everything. And, oh. well, here's the problem with burning mouth syndrome, okay, or with treating burning mouth syndrome. Doctors and patients, understandably patients, not understandably doctors, think that that's the problem. It's not the problem, Maria. It's a sign of the problem. You can't treat signs. You can only treat problems. Do you follow me? The burning mouth syndrome is the result of something. It's the end result of something. Once you have the burning mouth, as miserable it is, as it is, you can't do anything about it. Where you have power is over the cause. Do you know that most yeah. people who have burning mouth syndrome are women, especially postmenopausal or menopausal women? Um, you, no, you, I, I read a little bit about her, it could be hormonal. Yes, exactly. I am I'm you're right years around old. menopause or postmenopause. Yeah. So these are your, your, you know, the most likely uh, suspect when it comes to patients. When it comes to likely patients, it's you. So what does that tell okay. you? Well, it tells you there's an involvement with female hormone estrogen. Now, keep in mind, men make estrogen too. It's not just a female hormone, but women make more. So they're going to be more likely to have burning mouth syndrome. And really, all inflammatory issues tend to affect women more than men. Autoimmune issues tend to affect women more than men. And all of these are related to the inflammatory effects of estrogen, and more so than just estrogen, poorly processed estrogen. Estrogen is processed and metabolized and cleared out of the body through the digestive tract, through the bile in the gallbladder, through the liver, through the intestines. So all, and, and pro no gallbladder. Well, bingo. You know, right there, you can see a problem with estrogen. And guaranteed, by the way, nobody just has burning mouth syndrome. Maria, you have had to have had a problem with menopause, menstrual problems uh, when you were bleeding, or some kind of female reproductive issues. Correct? When uh, when you were um, younger. Um, Anything? Actually, I, I have pretty decent. Uh, well, you don't know that. You don't know that. You I couldn't have burning mouth syndrome. You, what else no. do you have going on? What other health challenges do you have? Is that um, the only one? Oh, no. I actually, I changed my whole lifestyle and this kind of style. No, 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 ago. sweetheart. Anyway, Maria. Pre diabetes, uh, pre-diabetic. Okay. They, they, uh, and, and high cholesterol. All of and it. And all this when I thought that I was like eating the healthiest diet in the, exactly. In the world. I started exactly. eating meat again. I quit all wheat. Because we I don't, what we think is a healthy diet isn't. And this is why when people tell me, oh, well, yeah, I eat. Exactly. We don't know. We just know what CNN tells us. <laughs> and we know what, what, what our doctor tells us. Neither of which are good sources for health information. Not CNN and not the doctor. And by the doctor, I mean the medical model. And by CNN, I mean the mainstream press. Yeah. So here's the deal. Burning mouth syndrome is, inf I'm going to cut to the chase, okay? I'm going to make it very simple. Burning mouth syndrome is inflammation in the nerves of the tongue and the mouth. There's lots of nerves in your tongue and your mouth. Okay, there's only a couple places that have more nerves than in your tongue and your mouth. So burning mouth syndrome is a tongue and it involves inflammation in the tongue, you know, nerves of the tongue and the mouth. Inflammation means attack. Something is attacking your body. Food, digestion, and a lack of oxygen are the three things that you want to address. And of course, the mighty 90 essential nutrients. If you have digestive issues, you must have them or you would have still have your gallbladder. So when you have your digestive issues, I'm not going to say if you have, I'm going to say when you notice them, link those to foods. If you're constipated, which is more likely than diarrhea or yes, loose stools. Very yes, very constipated. Okay, now we're talking here, all right? Nobody's going to think to link your constipation to your burning mouth, but that's a key piece of information. You can't control the burning mouth, but you can control the constipation. Do you see, you see how much more powerful you are now that you made this connection? Burning mouth is like, what am I going to do? How am I going to take care of this? Constipation you can take care of. Constipation is a digestive health issue. It involves weakness in the intestines, and it involves stress in the intestines. So what it means is you've got to start looking to foods. I'd be fasting and doing a food diary right away. And by the way, when you fast, you're going to notice if you have burning mouth issues, you're going to notice that they subside. You absolutely 100% need to be addressing your hormones. I'd be using progesterone cream. I'd be doing it today. 
or maybe pregnenolone capsules. Probiotics are a must-have for all female hormone issues, for everybody, really, but especially if you have estrogen issues. Please don't underestimate the uh, importance of the connection or the relationship between good bacteria and estrogen processing. Estrogen is really dangerous stuff if it's not processed correctly. Estrogen, of course, is an important hormone, but we have very tiny amounts of it in the blood because it's so darn potent, and it has to be cleared out, eliminated quickly. And it's cleared out and eliminated largely through bile. Without a gallbladder, you're going to have an issue with clearing out, ex or clearing out toxic or es excess estrogen. Use lecithin every day with all your meals. If, even if you're not eating, do a little bit of lecithin. It will help you. Uh, bile salts, absolutely vital for anybody who doesn't have a gallbladder. The ultimate enzymes, which contain bile salts, are like a... I have that, yeah. Make sure after all your meals, even take them on an empty stomach. Just get some bile salts in you. You can also use... And uh, lecithin, uh, how do I use the lecithin? Granules in water. Spoonful of granules in water. Drink them down with your meals. It's, it's okay. tastes pretty good. I like the taste of it anyway. You can also get something called lipase to go with your digestive enzymes. You probably want to do some apple cider vinegar. Make sure you're doing the entire Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients and keep yourself away from sugar. You're already pre-diabetic. That means bread and pasta and potatoes and burritos yeah. and anything, that, cereal, anything that breaks down into sugar. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's done. Yeah. Okay, good That's for you. Great. Sounds like you're serious about this. That, that burning mouth syndrome, that'll put the fear of God in you, I'm telling you. All right, well, I'm glad you're keeping your sense of humor. I hope we helped you out, Marie. I'm going to let you go now, okay? Have a beautiful okay, thank day. Thank you, Ben. Thank God you bless. so much. Thank you for what you're doing for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. God bless you. Okay, Bye. let's go to uh, Deborah in Texas. What is up, Deborah? Welcome to the Bright Side. Deborah, Deborah. Do we have Deborah? Okay, going once. Deborah, Deborah, we'll let... Did I mess this up here? Is Deborah there? Deborah? Hello? Hey, Deborah. Hey. Sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry I'm about like, that. No, not again. No, um, okay. <laughs> That's me. That's my fault. If I could just give you a little bit of history. Back in 2006, I was diagnosed with um, uh, metastasized stage 4 breast cancer. Okay. And, what year? Uh, 2006? Yes. You sound great. Yeah, you're doing something right. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, they put me on a study with Glexton, Klein, and Smith because I refused um, uh, radiation and chemotherapy. Okay. And um, and was the only one to actually survive the the drugs the, uh, trial. The, the uh, listen, study. the only one to survive. You mean everybody else died? Uh, they just said they weren't on the trial anymore. Okay, gotcha. Hey, listen, hang, you, we got to take a break. Don't go away, okay? We'll get to you when we come back. Don't go away. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Deborah in Texas. Deborah, are you there? Yes. Okay. Talk to me real quick. Okay. Uh, so anyway, I've been going to Texas Oncology for 10 years, and um, there, uh, the last time I went in, they said my tumor cell count had gone up, Okay. and um, they want to, or they prescribe me letrozole okay. from our, uh, an estrogen blocker. Blocker, right. Yeah. So, um, they have how can, been... How can we help they, you? Well, I want to know if there's some alternatives. Yes, there's it. lots. First of all, as I was saying to the last caller, Maria in Florida, it's not so much estrogen that is the problem, it's the processed estrogen. Estrogen is processed into metabolites that need to be cleared out of the body. And if your gallbladder and your liver and your intestine and your digestive system, the, the bacteria in your gut, if they're not everything, all of these systems aren't firing on all cylinders, you're going to get buildups in toxic, toxic estrogen. Are you following me? Uh -huh. So it's the breakdown product. And tell us to your doctor, by the way, they'll understand this. You got a pen? Yes. Write this down. Catechol estrogens. Ask your doctor if they know about those. And I'll spell that Catechol. for you. Catechol. Catechol. C A T. E C H O L, catechol estrogens. These are breakdown products, intermediary products of estrogen processing that build up when your gallbladder is messed up and your digestive system in general, including your liver, is messed up. Are you with me? Yeah. Deborah, you have to have had digestive issues. Okay? You know this? No. 
You, okay, well, look for them. It has to do with how you're processing fats and how you're processing foods in general, but especially fatty foods. No issues with the gallbladder or liver that you know of? I mean, no, you have to... uh, all those, uh, when they do those blood labs on me, all mm. that stuff comes out real good. My no, it doesn't matter the blood labs. It matters what happens when you're in the bathroom. It matters uh, what happens when you're sitting at home, when you're not doing anything. You don't need a blood lab. You need to check I your bowel movements. Five times a day. Well, that, that's not necessarily a good thing. I can't tell you. It could be loose. You could be losing.